to the Plant Food Federation, the place where plants and plates collide. I'm Afyong, based out of Lagos, Nigeria. Now, if it's your first time stopping by this channel, you are welcome. And if you've been here before, welcome back. On this channel, we have conversations about plant-based eating, and I share recipes that you can make on your own at home in your kitchen. Now, today I'm going to be sharing a recipe with you for a stir fry. I love stir fries. I love them because you can just cut up whatever vegetables you have available to you, throw in your herbs and your spices, and you basically have a meal ready to go. And in today's recipe, I'm going to be celebrating two what I consider very humble ingredients that I highly underrated. So the first one is the cabbage. Now I think the cabbage is available in most places around the world and the cabbage is a pr pretty bland vegetable on its own but there's so much that you can do with it. You can bake it, you can roast it, you can stir fry it, you can grill it, you can eat it raw and this it's just a great vegetable that I use quite a lot. The second ingredient that I'm going to be celebrating today is the coco yam. Um, coco yam, also known as taro, is similar to the dasheen if you're from the Caribbean. It's a root vegetable in the same category as yams and cassavas and potatoes. It's a great ingredient. It's high in nutrients as well. In Nigeria, we actually, um, sometimes we grate it and steam it in banana leaves and use it to eat soups and stews. And sometimes we actually use it as a thickener um, um, for food, uh, for soups and recipes as well. But today, because I feel it's highly underrated, I'm going to be baking the coco yam and I'm going to be creating a curried cabbage stir fry. And I'm going to bring this all together with some shiitake tamari mushrooms that are going to add that meaty texture to this dish. So, now that you're here, and before we get started, look down below this window, you will see the subscribe button. Go ahead and hit subscribe because you know you're gonna to wanna to stay connected. And then next to the subscribe button is the notification button. Go ahead and hit that as well because you, go, you are going to want to make sure that you get alerted as soon as new videos go up on this channel. All right, enough of the talking. Let's get in the kitchen and get to the cooking because after the cooking comes the eating and we don't need to delay that. So let's get to it. So this dish has a lot of great fresh vegetables in it. We've got the stars of the show, which are the coco yam and the cabbage. We also have some basil, some lemon, some fresh ginger and turmeric. I love using them fresh versus powdered. We've got some frozen peas, onions and leeks. Onions and leeks together are a great combination. And then we've got the shiitake mushrooms, which gives it that meaty flavor and lots of garlic. Now, also for this dish, you want to have your spice game together. So you're gonna have lots of paprika and chili powder, garam masala, curry powder, salt, black pepper, and coconut sugar. And coconut sugar will lift those flavors. So first of all, I'm going to chop my habanero peppers. You can leave the seeds in if you like the heat or take it out if you want it to be a little milder. So I'm just going to chop these up. I like to chop them in sort of slices so that you know I can get a taste for them in each part of the dish. Then comes the garlic. Um, love cooking with garlic. So you want to peel two cloves of got three cloves of garlic. Um, in this dish and we're just going to um, slice it really thinly and then chop it up. I prefer this method um, than using a garlic crusher because I like to get sort of more flavor from the garlic in the dish. Next up is the onion. So we're going to chop up a large onion. We're really just going to slice this up into thin slices. Um, and I love using yellow onions because they are slightly milder than the red onions, which are quite popular here in Nigeria. So that's really great fresh ginger um, and also great some fresh turmeric. Now turmeric does color your hands and fingernails, so just be careful when you're using it. So in a pan with coconut oil, we have onions, garlic, and the habanero peppers. We're just going to saute those for a minute or two before adding the ginger and the turmeric and saute those for another minute or so. Next up, we're going to chop up the leek. Um, we're going to chop it up into thin slices. There's a lot of chopping with stir fries, but you know, it's all good. You just chop and throw in the pan and your dish is pretty much done. So um, we're going to put the leeks in the pan with the rest of the ingredients and then just fold everything in. And you want to do this on a low heat just to make sure that the ingredients don't burn at the bottom of the pan. Of the pan. So you just want to put in the 
leeks and give it a good stir to make sure that um, all the flavors sort of meld together. So once that is done, you can now bring your spices into the mix. And so you want to put in your curry powder, your garam masala, your paprika, your chili powder, your coconut sugar, your salt, and your black pepper, and just mix everything in. You're also going to put in cumin and coriander. Now, I love to get my spices together before I start cooking. That way, when I'm putting everything in the pan, I can just throw everything at, in at once. So next up is the star of the show, which is the cabbage. You just want to slice this thinly and wash it, rinse it, and just throw it in the pan as well. And once you do that, you just want to give it a good stir to make sure that all the spices coat the cabbage in the pan. Again, keeping the heat low so that you don't burn anything. So once this is done, you can see that this stir-fry is coming together really nicely. Now you want to pour in your lemon juice. The lemon juice is really going to cut sort of the onion and the leek flavor and really lift this dish. Towards the end, you're going to add in your frozen peas. You don't want to overcook them. Um, you want them to retain their color and flavor and crunchiness as well. So you're going to put them in and stir them in with the rest of the ingredients. And finally, you want to throw in your basil leaves. So just throw in the basil um, at the end of cooking and just fold them in with the rest of the vegetables. And once you have done that, this dish is, this part of the dish is pretty much done. Look at that. Color and the smell, amazing. So next up, we're going to tackle the cocoa yam. And so we're just going to peel them. If you don't have cocoa yam or you don't like cocoa yam, you can use sweet potatoes, potatoes, or just regular yams. So we're just going to peel them. And then once we've peeled them, we're going to slice them into about half an inch um, thickness um, slices. Um, and then once you, you've sliced up the cocoa yam, you're just going to put all the slices into a bowl with some sea salt and water and soak them for about 30 minutes. This is going to help draw out some of the starch in the cocoa yam, which some people say they react to and gives them an itchiness at the back of their throat. So this helps with that. So you're going to boil them for about 10 minutes on the stove, and then you're going to... While you're doing that, you're going to put the seasoning mix together, which is basically coconut oil, some parsley, some sea salt, and some black pepper. And that's basically all that you're going to need to season these before you bake them. So we're going to drain the cocoa yam and put them in the bowl. I would definitely use a bigger bowl than I did. I thought about that after the fact. Um, and just make sure you sort of mix them in the spices and coat them. Now you can see sort of some of the cocoa yam has gone soft, uh, but that's okay because when you bake them, that's going to be really, those are going to be really crispy bits on them. So just place the cocoa yam on a parchment lined baking sheet. Make sure that you put them in a single layer so that they bake evenly. And then once you have done that, you want to just pop them in the oven and bake them for about 20 to 25 minutes. You want to check it halfway and just make sure that both sides cook through. Next up, we're tackling the shiitake mushrooms. This gives the dish a meaty flavor, so we're just slicing these up, putting them in a pan with some coconut aminos or tamari sauce, salt, and black pepper, and cook them for a few minutes, and they're good to go. Here's our cocoa yam. It is cooked through and ready to be plated. Now, I put this dish together Buddha bowl style, the cocoa yam, the tamari shiitake mushrooms, and the cabbage, curried cabbage, and garnished it with coriander and a wedge of lemon, and really just squeezing on more lemon, because lemon just makes it taste even better. So this dish is really simple to make. If you do decide to make this dish, definitely let me know in the comments below or tag me at hashtag PFFplate on social media. Please keep the conversations going in the comments. Remember to hit the subscribe button. Let's stay connected. And until next time, just remember, eating more plants is always a good thing to do.